Welcome to Prophecy Countdown with author and pastor Kenneth Baer. Join us every week for the latest updates on what the Bible has to say about the events, the characters, and prophetic signs of the return of Jesus Christ and His coming kingdom. Make sure you not only subscribe, but like your favorite episodes and share it with your friends. Now, on with the broadcast. Welcome to Prophecy Countdown. We provide two updates each week on this channel called Prophecy Countdown. On Wednesdays, our updates premiere at 11 a.m., and then on Sunday, our updates premiere at 1 p.m. The title of my message today is number 383, The Parable of the Lost Sheep. As we'll be continuing our journey through the Gospel of Matthew, today we'll be in Matthew chapter 18, and we'll be taking a look at five verses there, verses 10 through 14. Uh, and this is a, a pretty familiar parable, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy our take on it. Now, on... Um, Every, like I said, every Wednesday we have our prophecy update, and you know you'll see because of the name of our our our, our podcast channel, prophecy update, you'll see a prophecy thread typically in, in almost all of our all of our updates. And the reason is is that about a third of the Bible is actually prophecy. So it's not unusual as you go through the Bible, even if if you go through like we do, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Often, you'll see that there is a, a prophecy topic there somewhere. So send us, your, send us ideas for topics. Our email is prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. That's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. Many of our updates on Wednesday come from questions from you, the viewing and the listening audience. So let's get to our, our question today. Um, and again, we're at number 383, the parable of the lost sheep, and we'll be in Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. So today we're taking a, a look at a parable that Jesus told. This one is found in both the Gospel of Matthew as well as the Gospel of Luke. You know, there's somewhere between 45 and 50 parables in the four Gospels. Now, the reason why we have this range is because it depends on how you count. Some of the parables are relatively short, and as a result, they get included. The two of them get grouped together because they are talking basically about the same thing. Now, what is a parable? Since we're talking about a parable today, what is a parable? Well, parable is an earthly story with a heavenly message. I like that definition, an earthly story with a heavenly message. You know, Jesus often spoke in parables, and in fact, the Gospel of John says that Jesus only spoke in parables. Now, that's, that's hyperbole. It's an exaggeration. It's intentionally used in order to show the emphasis of how important parables were in the teaching of Jesus. And this is, as, as the parables are Jesus' primary teaching tool, we're gonna make sure that we spend a little time looking at all of these parables. We can learn a lot from them. Um, in the 13th chapter of Matthew, his disciples asked the question, why do you speak so often in parables? Now Jesus' answers to his disciple is pretty revealing. This is what it says beginning in verse 11. Jesus says, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. And to them the prophecy Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the heart of this people has grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn so that I should heal them. Very telling, isn't it? Now that was Isaiah speaking about the people of Israel. Jesus said it to the people of, of uh, Jerusalem and Judah and Canaan at the time of, of that he was walking the earth, and I think it's true also for today. Jesus is basically saying that while many can hear, few, few actually listen. Now, we shouldn't be surprised, but my wife Carol often tells me that I'm not listening. She knows that I can hear. I may even nod and, head my, and nod my head and maybe even grunt an answer, but she knows I'm not truly listening. In my defense, I often say, well, I'm, I'm just distracted but, or preoccupied, but the point is I'm not listening. 
And we have to be very careful because just as Jesus referenced Isaiah, um, there's an unwillingness often to truly hear the words of Jesus. And this is why Jesus spoke in parables, because parables are stories. They're easy to remember, and you can chew on them for a while. Um, now, it was not because, Jesus didn't speak in parables because he was hiding the truth. Well, actually, the opposite. He was revealing the truth in a way that people could understand. Now, this points to a great truth, and we'll actually develop it further as we go through this parable today. Jesus gives, gives every chance, every chance for people to accept the message. His message is of hope, of salvation. His message is the gospel. His ministry was attested to by miracles. He offered the proper credentials uh, as a Messiah, yet the people of Israel didn't receive him. The realities of the kingdom, therefore, were not theirs. The people who believed in Jesus as the Messiah would be able to understand these parables. They would comprehend the great truths of the coming kingdom of God. Now, here's an even greater truth. We'll go back to the same very words of Jesus. He says, it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. I've taught this before, and I often say, no, what is a mystery? Well, a mystery is something that may not be obvious, especially at the beginning, may be unknown initially, but it can be understood. Mysteries are not always mysteries. Mysteries often get found out. All good murder mysteries start off with a whodunit at the beginning, but by the end, by the end of the murder mystery, we know the who, the what, the where, and the how, right? I mean, we know all these things. This is what a mystery is. So let's go ahead and read this parable. Matthew chapter 18, you can follow along in your Bible, beginning in verse 10, and then we'll get into uh, what Jesus reveals. Verse 10 says, Jesus says, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father. So what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go look for the one who wanders off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about the one sheep that about one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. You know, many people begin this parable at verse uh, verse uh, 11, but I included verse 10 because it is a transition. If you recall last week, we saw that the disciples of Jesus had been arguing, and uh, they came to him. In fact, he, he knew what they were arguing about, and he they were talking about who would be the greatest. Now, there were some children that were present at the time, so Jesus stood among the children and used the children as an example that you had to, we have to uh, repent and be converted and become like little children. And we explained that last week that it's really the attributes of what a child is that's important. The attributes are humility and simplicity, dependency and trust. And that is why this verse is such a great transition between, between what Jesus was talking about with his disciples and today the parable. Jesus says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angel in heaven always sees the face of my father. Now, the little ones are children, and also those people that would be, we would call babes in the faith. Jesus says, don't lead them astray. These, are, these people are very precious. Even the angels are in the presence of the father. So let's get into the main parable. Jesus is talking about two, two different groups of people. He's talking about the shepherd or shepherds, and he's also talking about sheep. As parables reveal the mysteries of the kingdom of God, let's see in this parable, the question would be, who is the shepherd? Who is the great shepherd? Well, the answer is obvious. It's Jesus. Jesus is often seen in the parables. He is the king, and every kingdom has a king. So if the parables are revealing the kingdom of God, we'll often see Jesus as one of the main characters in these parables. Now we see sheep. And Jesus says a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray. So let's talk about sheep for a minute. I, I'm a city boy. 
and they're really the only time I've ever seen sheep up close is at a petting zoo. I've seen them on TV, but at a, at a petting zoo, and sheep typically aren't in zoos, but I, but I know a little bit about sheep from what I've learned from the parables, what I've learned from the Bible. And this is what the Bible tells us about sheep. Number one, sheep wander. Sheep wander. Sheep are easily led astray. And because they're easily led astray, they're prone to danger, if not under the care of a, of a shepherd. This vulnerability is used to illustrate the need for guidance and protection that we find in the great shepherd, which is Jesus. Number two, sheep need a shepherd. Sheep are often depicted as defenseless, relying on the shepherd for guidance, for protection and provision. You know, as a pastor, pastors are our shepherds, and those are the attributes of a, of a good pastor. We're here to, to guide, to protect, and also to provide. Those are the types of things that a pastor does because a pastor is, is filling the role of what we call an under-shepherd. Now, in the same way, Jesus is teaching us that we need to understand that we are to be dependent on God. We are dependent upon the shepherd. And then number three, um, in one of Jesus' other passages, Jesus tells us that the sheep recognize the shepherd's voice. I love that. We talked about that last week. I would categorize this as one of the attributes that sheep are fond of the shepherd. That's number three. They are fond of the shepherd. Sheep not only recognize the voice of the shepherd, but they come to him. And they follow him without any hesitation. I think we can see what Jesus is teaching us, that we need to hear and obey. You know, Jesus, when he called his disciples, what did he say? He said, follow me, follow me. And those that became disciples followed him. So let's take a look at the shepherd. Jesus says this. He says, so one of them wanders away. Will the shepherd not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he is happier about the one sheep um, than the other 99 that did not wander off. So here, this parable turns a corner. This is not unusual. Um, and the focus is no longer on the sheep, but the shepherd. And what happened? Well, one of the sheep wanders off. It's, it's one of the things that sheep do. And Jesus says it's one of these little ones, one of the little ones that Jesus referred to at the very first verse. And what do we see? What are the characteristics of the shepherd? Well, just like we did for the sheep, we can do the same for the shepherd. Number one, we see the compassion, the compassion of the shepherd. The shepherd, shepherd is willing to leave the 99 sheep to search for the one that wandered off. It, it demonstrates a deep compassion and concern for the individual sheep. The kingdom of God highlights God's compassion as he seeks out and cares for those who are lost or straying on him. You know, when, when I got saved, almost actually over 40 years ago now, I remember that one of the things the pastor said, the preacher said, is that, you know, Jesus died on the cross. And if there was no other people on earth, Jesus would have died on the cross for me. And I found that so hard to understand. But when you read this parable about the shepherd leaving the 99 and having so much care and compassion for the one, I think what that preacher told me over 40 years ago is true, that Jesus would have gone to the cross if, if, if just for one of us, just one of us. Number two, secondly, this parable, we see the shepherd's persistence. The shepherd is determined He's determined to search for that lost sheep until he finds it. It highlights his persistence, his unwavering commitment to the well-being of the flock. You know, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus says this. He says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. You know, so many times uh, when people are giving their testimony, they say, I found Jesus. <laughs> well, that might be from your perspective, but actually from a biblical perspective, Jesus found you. It's the shepherd that goes and looks for the sheep. The shepherd is persistent in his efforts to reach out to those who are lost and bring them back to the fold. And here's the third thing we see. Number three, the shepherd's joy in restoration. 
when the shepherd finds the lost sheep, what well, he rejoices. He rejoices greatly, showing his joy in the restoration of the one that was lost. Again, going back to the Gospel of Luke, where the parable is there, it's very similar. The, the parable, you can read it, it's a, a shepherd has 100 sheep, one is lost, the shepherd leaves the 99 to find the one. Uh, this is what it says the shepherd is rejoicing over. He says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. You see, in the Gospel of Luke, it, 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 Jesus is telling the story, and in this time that he tells it, he's giving us a hint about what this one that was lost. The one that was lost is a, is a sinner. And I'm so glad that Jesus pursues the sinner. You know, so often, when we sin, we feel we've been cut off from God and we're kind of abandoned, but that's not true. This parable is clearly teaching us that God pursues us. He pursues the one that is lost. He pursues the sinner. Who is the lost sheep? Well, it's the sinner. These parables point and reveal the truths of the kingdom of God. God is not willing, the Bible says, for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, in the Gospel of Luke, this parable of the lost sheep is told by Jesus when the Pharisees were criticizing him, criticizing Jesus for socializing with the sinners. This story of compassion, Jesus reveals his rescue mission for sinners. That's why Jesus was hanging out with sinners, with tax collectors. When the Pharisees heard this, see, when the Pharisees heard this, they identified with the 99. The 99 that didn't need to be found because they were righteous. The Pharisees believed that they were completely righteous. Their good works, their moral superiority. But Jesus, what did Jesus tell them? He told them they were not good enough. They weren't good enough. It was never going to be through good works. They could never be good enough to be able to satisfy, satisfy the law. Now, Jesus was very frustrated. If you read the New Testament, Jesus was often frustrated with the religious elite, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the reason was is because they were to be the shepherds of Israel, but they weren't acting like shepherds. Instead of being compassionate, they were judgmental. Instead of being caring for the least of them, they felt superior. Instead of teaching truth, they burdened the people with the law. Instead of promoting justice and mercy, their focus was often on personal piety and appearing, just appearance, and appearing to be righteous. This is why Jesus taught in parables, the parable of this good shepherd who left the 99 in search of the one one who wanted to protect the little one, the one that was prone to wander. You know, my friends, these parables give us a glimpse into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom where Jesus reigns as Lord and King, where justice and mercy form the foundation of God's kingdom. And it embodies the principles of love and compassion and righteousness. Jesus is the good shepherd. And I tell you, my friends, Jesus told us that he would go to prepare a place for us. And moreover, that he would return and receive us unto himself and take us back to the Father's house. I hope you pray for that. That is what Paul calls the, the blessed hope. You know, this is the story, this is the parable of the good shepherd. My friends, if you happen to be one of those lost sheep, don't fret. Jesus is looking for you. I'd, you know, I'd rather, quite frankly, I'd rather identify with the lost sheep who Jesus comes to seek and to save rather than identify with the 99 who are left alone and don't really need Jesus seeking them. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. So, Father God, we want to thank you uh, for this opportunity to uh, share this parable. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. 
You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.